some more blow surround coming up in a sec. This plane. Well, that f went underneath the seating. Wow. Yeah, those surrounds are turned on. Wow, that passed underneath. That was cool. It's the same on the back row, underneath the seating. Wow, that's for real. Wow, brilliant. That's brilliant. Even though there's, you know, I've got lots of these. There's one down there. Down there, I've got lots, of, lots of JBL, 117 speakers. Oh, that was good. Standing from, I'm standing up. At this height, yeah, because I'm changing my <clears throat> what you call uh, elevation where you where 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 you are sat or standing is where it's sounding. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. I mean, if I put my ear close to the floor, it's gonna, you know, obviously the perception of sound is gonna be different. Oh. oh, that was cool. <laughs> Got the side surrounds turned off. So just running the overhead with the matrix below surround. Wow, that sounds like a, you know, I'm thinking of expanding it a little bit more. Uh, with a hell of, heck of a lot more um, <clears throat> control ones underneath. It only works best if you've got real cinema seats. If you haven't got real cinema seats, this idea ain't for you because it just it just won't work. Um, it wouldn't work if you were to put the speakers over to the side because then the sound's going to be not kind of... Um, well, it's going to be a little bit out of place. Um, it might work if you use another matrix decoder, maybe a PL2X, uh, and just simply explore with the decoder's steering. You've got to connect, first connect it up to your main AVR, and it's got to be connected up to your, the RCA outputs or XLR outputs. Um, and you really best um, using outboard amplifiers, because if you use the um if you're using the output amp of amplifier sorry if you're using the outputs the speaker outputs from here and then you decide to use the also the rca phonos the thing won't work it won't work because you've got to, the decoding has got to be activated otherwise um you ain't going to extract the center phantom away from the side surrounds Whoa, oh, that was behind me, uh, even though it was in front of me. Um, you see, where you are is where, where it sounds, where you're positioned. See, if I turn around, is where it sounds. And, uh, oh, gosh, that's, oh, that's brilliant. Um, yeah. Wow, that is brilliant. That is cool. That is so cool. Um, yeah, explore with, um, you know, I've got lots of AVRs in the cupboard. Uh, I'm, I'm mostly using uh, CP45s at the moment to uh, do my uh, center below, center matrix below surround. Um, years ago, it was overhead. 
it's all changed but the thing is the sad thing is AVR manufacturers not even Dolby Labs even in the cinema they're not even you know I'm sure if they listen I'm sure if they listen you know even if the mixers are listening you know um, you know you think oh yeah yeah that that makes sense because it wouldn't make sense for that plane when it flies underneath yeah it comes out and then underneath yeah because it's it's going that way yeah you know meow yeah or sometimes you see these typical meow at that or at the corner you know yeah around the corners you know you always see these cliches they're very typically common as mud um so you really got to, you're not it's not just a case of listening you've got to watch you got to watch but it never always often works the effect but on some films yeah but then you know you never be the wiser i mean you know you gotta try it out you know give it a give it a try it's better than it's better than nothing at the moment which is you know they're not offering on all these ex extremely expensive avrs like you know and then you add on some matrix decoder, and someone's going to say, "Oh, why do that?" Well, obviously you you haven't got you obviously haven't got a mind where you can freely think now, have you? And um, you probably sold your AVR, and you don't want to go on eBay again buying another like, "Oh, it's old technology." Yeah, well, sound itself, in a way, is kind of old technology. You know, give it a try. It's certainly excited. I'll certainly get excited. And if anyone's here, I think they would notice. I notice that sound there, as well as some below surround. I can sense a blow surround there and there as well. You know, because if you're in an aeroplane, a thing like that, you, the sound is literally going to be everywhere. Yeah, all different noises. Even when you're walking around, in, even though they haven't quite got, you know, foley footsteps, you know, moving around, because it's certain... Where, like I say, where the camera is, is like, say, if I'm standing up, I know my feet are on the ground. They can't be anywhere else, and they make a sound. So if they're all running around, walking, running around inside the aircraft, yeah, they're gonna bang, bang, bang. You're gonna get some direct sounds there on the ground, on the on the base of the aircraft fuselage. The rest of it's gonna echo and reverberate and crick make little crinky sounds, crank, uh, metally sounds all around the rest of the, the in, uh, inside of the fuselage. You know, you don't, you don't need to have, um, you know, it does, it, it, I mean, it's common sense to anyone that can see and hear. And what goes on there? Uh, they were mostly, it was mostly on screen think they didn't quite pass you know but oh the uh, the base on the over on on the blow surround is pretty good <laughs> so I'm using little JBL control ones and they're connected up to a JBL SB2 there are three of them at the back of the room. Uh, two for um, the side surrounds and one for the uh, cent uh, below below um, or below surround matrix or matrix below surround, depending on what you want to call it. Because you know, yeah, I think it'll come up in a second that game. Uh, four four minute forty seven second. 
Here it comes. <laughs> wow, that's brilliant. <laughs> uh, I can hear other, other sounds appearing slightly below. Diffused, diffused. And it's good with the cinema seats because um, you get more or less like, a, it's like, a, well, the THX Dipolar or something. It, it's kind of diffused because of the sound. Think about it. It's going to go up, reflect over, and spread out. And I've got a heck of a lot more I want, want to put in. I've got, got a heck of a lot more. But it's great. It's great as it is. It's great as it is at the moment. Brilliant. Even though I can hear that, even though some of the positioning of the sound, some of it will be on the screen channel with the, the firing. <coughs> but, you know, I'm thinking of, like, pinpoint positions of sounds. Oh, that was brill. Here it comes. And that plane came right underneath me as it is moving that way. This film, it gets a bit talked about. Wow. Brilliant. <laughs> course you gotta get the levels levels you gotta restart all over again you gotta adjust frequency um use the get out the rem put it through the avr uh through the all channel um stereo mode and go through each channel get the microphone up close get some uh pink noise readings don't bother with the frequency sweep just get some just do it with pink noise get it as tone timbre matched as possible but you're going to need outboard eqs because um you ain't going to be able to do it with odyssey because if you use odyssey you'll mess it up because the decoding has the eq has got to be done after the decoding um the extra decoding that is any outboard extra decoding eq has got to be applied afterwards you cannot apply it before otherwise it will mess up the decoding wow and all, all eq the all eq here is done after decoding i don't use any of that odyssey rubbish not that i'm not that it's rubbish it's okay it's so it's okay but i do not use it do not use it i've got enough got, got enough dolby um cat 64b um, EQ to sink a battleship here and uh, outboard EQs in the kitchen for all the uh, overhead surrounds um, basic uh, half octave EQ which is on the CP45s so that would be doing my uh, below surround and side surrounds but that would be soon changed to a third octave uh, rigged up in the kitchen so I might think of uh, maybe A I might change these out but if I change these out, I mean, sticking in an AVR, that's going to be way too large in height, and it's going to take up way too much, you know. But most people, if you've got an AVR, you can easily do this, quite easily. But one, you've got to have an AVR, you've got to have a dish, you've got to have extra speakers, and it's better to keep them all the same for your below surround, keep them all the same. A JBL Control one fits under nicely under these cinema seats, and um, they do very well if they're coupled with um, a sub bass speaker. So, not doing bass through your bass bin channels, uh, all that bass management nonsense, a load of rubbish. Do it separate. Do it separately. Um, they're all going through an SP um, SP two. That's can't see because I haven't got the light on. I can't turn the light on with the um hang on. There we go. 
and there's one there <laughs> there's one back there and there's another one right here, over there this one's for the side surround left and the other one right over there is for side wall right so it's just extend the base and the one in the middle back there whoops uh, that's for the uh, center uh, or rather the below matrix because it's taken the center phantom from the left and right and it's rerouting it this idea came to mind Whoa, way back as far as whoa, whoa, turn the light off um, that light got dementia uh, this idea came to mind uh, back as far as 1990 1998 when I saw the film The Peacemaker and the, the opening had a train passing underneath the screen and while I was talking to a, um, one of the projectionists at the cinema um, just before I started with Warner Brothers <laughs> You know, I said, you know, we were watching the scene and then we turn at each other. Yeah, and look, and then we pause talking and it should have sounded below us. <laughs> he was thinking the same thing I was thinking um, because that's what projectionists do. Um... <laughs> Uh, because where we were at the back of the auditorium, the surround speakers would be above us, yeah? And so when the train comes, yeah, it's it, it sounds over our heads because they're up there. Now, if I were to stand up, I would be more or less then directly in its, you know, but the angle of the cinema and the you know, it would be like that. And it still wouldn't make sense to me. And so, yeah. This idea below surround came to me as far back as um, 1998. And uh, centre back surround came to my idea as far back as 1989. And I didn't put that into action until at least... Um, 1998 when I got a Millennium DTS decoder for my um, Laserdisc player, rigged it up to GoldenEye and wow sent my backs around and also um, the idea of using overhead, matrix overhead because um, the decoder I was using was a Yamaha DSR70 Pro connected up to a Millennium DTS um decoder and so it could do a little bit more um if i wanted to i, did, I tried out the the overhead with unmatched speakers probably about 2000 year 2000 um but i only tried it for about a week or two because it didn't sound right because of the speakers i was using and it it, it needed a lot more tuning up and it sounded a bit too raspy a bit bit wow woof that woom that passes on the boy my fader's only that only that level so you can imagine what it's like uh when it's up above uh, uh a little bit above um a little bit above minus ten wow woom um yeah it's great it's great being a projectionist years ago because you know you get to watch these films over and over and listen in the monitor the the sound on the booth monitor in the projection room um and yeah pretty pretty uh what's the word um inspiring hmm That's brilliant. Anyway, Unbroken. Good film. Particularly for uh, Chapter 1. <laughs> but, you know, after a while, um, you know, put on something else. Uh, woof, yeah. The only, the, only flaw, the only flaw is... OK, I'll fade this down a little bit. The only flaw um, sometimes is with rain sound effects... Because rain is a pretty complex sound. 
um, to, to get it right because you think you it, it sounds like shh, like that when you hear it outside rain effectively is falling from the clouds silent virtually silent and that shh, sort of sound you hear that's the sound of it maybe you're not standing near a tree that's the sound of it landing on lots of tree leaves and branches and it just happens to shh, sound and when you walk underneath directly underneath a tree you get the idea you hear a totally different frequency sound as well as you're hearing it on the ground as well on the surface because you know i could take a i could get a piece of water a bit of water and just pour it like just you know but you wouldn't hear it you'd only hear it once it's landed on the floor but hollywood mixed films like bloody rain sound effects like it bloody sounds it's making a bloody sound when it's free falling out of the flipping sky for christ's sakes it might make a sound if it lands on a bird's feathered back hundreds of feet up but the thing is you won't be there to hear it that's the same thing like if a tree falls over in a forest uh would you hear it of course um you know it's going to make a sound you're just not there to witness it you know um It's like that aeroplane I just shot down. There it goes. And eventually it's going to go into the water and it's going to make a sound. But they're not going to be able to hear it. You know why? Because of the loudness of the air, the, air, the aircraft, the speed, and they're moving away from it, but they just wouldn't hear it. But it would... Then that'd be it. Um, yeah. you got to be, for this sort of thing, you really got to eat, live, breathe, sleep, dream it. And that is what I do. Sound is my pet love. Um, this is this is not too bad. Uh, I don't know how all the rest of the sound effects would play in the rest of the film, but um, uh, they might sound inaccurately in place. But, um, yeah... The opening, wow. Five minutes of that opening is brilliant.